All right, you guys, we are here today with Robin Vieira and Abby Milner. If you guys listened to our last podcast, we um, got to speak with Abby about her history in sport. And now we're going to do a triple podcast. This is our first triple podcast um, because there's a connection here that we're going to dive into. But first, I'm going to introduce you guys to Robin. I'm going to let her give us a little bit of background about herself, and then we'll kind of tie all of this together. So go ahead, Robin. Awesome. Thanks, Kyla. Um, yeah, super happy to be here. Thanks for the opportunity to chat. Um, I am a, gosh, kind of a mix of a lot of things, but I am a mindfulness advocate. I am a mindfulness meditation coach and a yoga teacher. Um, and then I'm also a long distance ultra trail runner, mountain biker, and I love to backcountry ski. So um, yeah, I'm really excited to dive into these conversations today and awesome. chat with you guys. Yeah. Well, I know, like I mentioned, for those of you guys listening, you got to learn a bit about Abby, but um, there is a connection here with Abby and Robin. They've done some work together, actually, in the mindfulness world. We're going to touch on that. But first, I kind of want to learn a bit more about Robin. And um, if you could kind of dive into, you mentioned the ultra running stuff. I'm um, very curious, like what what sports did you do in school, if any, or how did you kind of get into running? Did it start short? Did you just dive right into the long stuff? How did that evolve? <laughs> yeah, no, it's a good question. Um, to be completely honest with you, I I think this is character of a, of a lot of long distance ultra runners, but I didn't really like to run growing up. I played soccer since I was five. Um, and then I played soccer competitively into college and running was kind of all, always this thing that um, was a training aspect. I knew that I had to do it to play mm -hmm. soccer, which was like what I was all about. Um, yeah. my, I lived and breathed soccer. <laughs> so <laughs> so um, running took on this form of like maybe six miles max to train mm -hmm. at a relatively fast pace or also sprints um, on the field or around the track. And I, I kind of like laughed at it sometimes to be completely honest. Cause I was like, I don't want to run unless I have a soccer ball at my feet. But <laughs> um, I think what ended up happening was after I graduated from college, I had this crossroads where I could either, I had an invitation to try out for the women's, um, a, a women's semi-professional team and mm -hmm. It just so happened that that was at the same time as this yoga teacher training in mm -hmm. Bali that I had mm -hmm. um, been looking at for about six months. Wow, yeah. And so, um, I mean, it was really ironic that those two things were happening at the same time and I had to choose. And so I ended up choosing uh, the yoga teacher training, which was really hard for me because mm -hmm. I had chosen soccer my whole life. And um, I mean, that, that, yoga teacher training is sort of really what launched me into ultimately the running that I do now because it, yeah. it, it introduced, um, mindfulness to me yeah. and running is sort of this product of mindfulness. It's, it's a meditation for me. It's a moving meditation. And, um, I started realizing that I could run six miles, I could run 16 miles, I could run 26 miles and so on and so forth. And it just obviously had to do with training my physical body, but mm -hmm. more than anything, it was about training my mental self. Cool. Um, yeah. So yeah, it's been a, it's been an amazing journey and I'm, I'm definitely, I, I don't really like to run on road. It kind of hurts my body. And I'm also yeah. in a amazing um, location where I can run from my door onto trail. So awesome. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Cool. And speaking of the mindfulness piece with like the running, um, do you, cause I, I used to notice when I would run, do longer runs, I would get into like a breathing pattern. Mm -hmm. Do you notice that you have a breathing pattern? Is it like full? Do you, do you pay attention? Do you notice how you breathe or? Yeah. Yeah. No, 100%. That was a really interesting part of learning to run longer distances. Um, mm -hmm. I mean, you're, you're, I oftentimes I'm running by myself yeah. in the mountains and it can either be this really peaceful experience where the sun's out, it's gorgeous, everything is perfect, or it's kind of 
intimidating. Like you're mm-hmm. in the mountains, feels like you're by yourself. The weather might not be ideal. And so the breath is kind of what I always end up returning to. And so as a result, you pay attention to your breath and yeah. um, it's like this rhythmic, uh, I mean, it's a, it's like a meditation, a, a moving, breathing meditation. And yeah. if I'm having a hard time running because I'm tired or I'm kind of, maybe I find myself freaking out because I'm like, oh my God, I have 15 more miles to run. I'm running out of food or whatever it is, returning back to the breath. It's like that one consistent thing when you're yeah. in a world of unknown. Yeah. yeah. Do you notice if you, do you fully nose breathe like in out through the nose or do you do in the nose out the mouth? Do you have any pattern there? Yeah, it changes. Sometimes when I'm training, I'll try to just nose breathe. Mm -hmm. Um, But what's interesting is I have to be in the right mindset to nose breathe because as Mm -hmm. soon as you start nose breathing, if you're used to breathing out of your mouth, it can feel kind of like you're not getting enough air. Um, So I'll slow down my pace and just kind of shift into that that state of mind and then that helps and it's really quite peaceful yeah um and then but but it is it's like a um um like an active shift for me mm-hmm. to shift to nose breathing because it's normal for me is breathe in the nose out the mouth in the nose mm-hmm. out the mouth. Yeah. so um obviously if i'm like hauling myself up a steep hill then it's like all mouth breathing right right but yeah 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 That's awesome. I know there's a lot of um, like research coming out into Mm -hmm. the whole like nose breathing world and activating or managing like the parasympathetic versus the sympathetic. And that might be something you will touch on with your mindfulness um, practice, Mm -hmm. who knows. But um, I just, I'm always curious about that because I remember when I was doing the longer stuff, not only would I try and, well, I think I used to do like an in the nose, out the mouth kind of thing, but I'd like kind of time the length of the breath and exhale with like so many strides or something like that. Yeah. And you get, you get into that kind of pattern and it just, it is very meditative, Mm -hmm. um, which Mm -hmm. is nice, especially when you're outside in nature. Yeah. Yeah. And you can notice like, okay, if I take four breaths and then exhale versus taking two breaths and exhale, like it, if you're paying attention, if you're aware, it directly shifts your state of mind and Mm -hmm. how you're feeling about your run. And like, to your point earlier, whether you're in that parasympathetic state, you know, versus not. So totally. Yeah. yeah, It's really interesting. So speaking of running, you and Abby (laughs) met on a run, right? We did. Yes. (laughs) We, um, I don't know how much Abby's told you about this, but, um, my boyfriend Ren started a mountain biking like community club thing here in Bend called the Trail Kooks. Cool. <laughs> and that sort of transformed into a running club as well. Mm-hmm. It's really not a club, it's more of a community. And yeah. so we started last November, um, or I guess two Novembers ago, the running portion. And so mm-hmm. we would meet every week and run in the freezing cold like in snow and ice and with headlamps. Um, And so Abby just so happened to be friends with one of our mutual friends and she came on one of the runs. And I think Abby, wasn't it like, um, we were out east of town and it was very cold and like snow was (laughs) on the ground and we all had headlamps. And I just remember Abby and I, um, we were running next to each other because we were running like a very similar pace and we started talking and I think both of us realized like a mile into the run that we had like a weird amount of things in common. <laughs> 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 like I remember we were talking about how fascinated we were talking about how fascinated we are by the human body and um, mm-hmm. exercise physiology and which is what I studied in college. Um, oh, cool and neuroscience and how things work basically. But then we were also super into creative thinking and, and like bridging the gap almost yeah. between those two worlds. So Very cool. How yeah. was that run, Abby? Do you remember? <laughs> it, it was very dark and it was very cold, but I remember just like in like looking back now, I'm so thankful because my friend Lucy is the one that had kind of brought me on and um, invited me to that run. And I was still like pretty new to bend. I think Lucy was like one of my only friends at that point. Um, so just kind of to automatically have this amazing community of people that like 
want to go out and run in the dark and in the snow. I was like, <laughs> you're like, who are these crazy people? <laughs> um, yeah, it was just nice because I feel like I've never, I mean, I had that a little bit in college with my team, but most people wouldn't want to do that. So it was nice to like find that community. And then I also remember like, even like looking at Robin's Instagram after and like both of us are obsessed with other people. And I was like, wow, this girl like steals as much as I do. <laughs> yes. So, yeah. yeah. That's something I noticed as well on both of you guys. I think, I mean, you both, you guys have, I, it seems like a similar style on your social pages and, and may, like both incredible photography and love for teal or turquoise. <laughs> all over the place. I love it. I love it so much. Um, awesome. So let's see, since we are kind of diving into the, you know, adventuring running kind of world, I know that, I mean, you mentioned mountain biking, there's running. I think both you guys are involved in yoga and Robin, you mentioned the yoga teacher training. So do you teach yoga now, Robin? Um, so I actually, it's, well, Currently not at a studio, obviously, because things are yeah. kind of shut down here. But um, I did just finish doing like a series, a yoga series offered online mm -hmm. that was open to anyone. Um, really just with the overall goal of helping people find some space in their mm -hmm. homes yeah. during the pandemic. Yeah. Um, and that was a really cool experience. I got to meet some new people. Um, and Abby was a part of that series as well. And um, yeah, it was just a really neat way to come together, practice some yoga, also practice some mindfulness and meditation. Yeah. Do you, yeah. with the kind of yoga style teaching, what, how would you describe the type of yoga that you um, teach? Mm -hmm. um, what I seem to teach more than other styles is vinyasa. So mm -hmm. my uh, teacher training was, founded or rooted, I guess, in combination of vinyasa, ashtanga yoga. Um, and we definitely did a, a fair bit of pranayama, so meditation mm -hmm. training as well. Yeah. So I try to combine like a bit of all of that in my classes, yeah. but what, what people seem to be wanting lately is like either tons of movement to get their bodies moving or like stillness. Yes. So I, I find, I mean, my favorite classes to take and teach involve getting the heart rate up, moving your body, stretching, obviously, but moving through that vinyasa flow and then starting and finishing with like 10 minutes of meditation. Yeah. Personally, I can't sit still unless I like start with some movement. Yeah. Um, so yeah. That's nice. Do you, so you mentioned Abby was part of the um, yoga teaching online that you were doing. Was it, Abby, were you teaching or were you attending the, the classes? I, yeah. So um, yeah, Robin was doing just kind of like video screen. So we'd all just log on and then um, Robin would be through a little bit of a yoga flow. And then like the last like five to 10 minutes would be um, kind of mindfulness practice and meditation. Awesome. Awesome. And do you guys both practice yoga daily or how often do you guys incorporate that? I should do it more than I do. <laughs> <laughs> Things where like personally, I love yoga when I'm like doing it consistently and I feel like it helps me so much. And like, it's so good to stretch out and strengthen those smaller muscle groups that I feel like as endurance athletes, you just kind of like put that on the back burner but um that's kind of why Robin's classes were so nice it was just like really easy to log on and there's even like one time I texted her and was like do you have any yoga classes like my legs are so bad and it because it's just kind of like convenient to do it in your home so yeah um, yeah I I try now to do it at least once a week awesome so I think I should once a week <laughs> <laughs> what about yeah. you um, gosh, I, first of all, I think that people think that yoga teachers have like this perfect practice that's very serene, happens at the same time, maybe at the crack of dawn every single day. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> maybe that's true for some people, but for me, um, 
it, it comes, it ebbs and flows. I mean, I do practice once a day, Mm -hmm. but it's not at the same time every day. Sometimes it's literally for two minutes on my mat. Sometimes it's for 45 minutes. Like it just depends on what I have time for that day, what I'm feeling, what my body needs, what my mind needs. Um, Mm -hmm. and, um, I also don't have the same flow that I go through or the same meditation practice every single day. It's Mm -hmm very much so based on, um, what, what the day brings and how I wake up. And I think that that itself is a practice, like waking up, training our minds to wake up. And before you do anything, before you look at your phone, take like maybe your feet hit the ground and you're, you're, you're like rooted in that day and you take an inventory of your body and your mind and how you're feeling. And then you structure your potential yoga flow or whatever, whatever you do to start your day based on that. Yeah. Um, so lately for me, it's been a mixture of, uh, breath work and like a very short vinyasa practice, but I've been enjoying, um, doing a lot of like joint mobility stuff. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think probably because I'm like on my bike a lot and running a lot and Abby can relate to this, I'm sure. But Um, like making sure that my joints are just staying healthy and not only stretching and holding these stretches, but doing some like active movements in Mm -hmm. the morning to like jumpstart my body before anything else. Yeah. Do you use any like mobility tools? Like I know there's the whole, like, like, I think it might've started maybe it was physical therapy or CrossFit. I don't know, but they have all the foam rollers and the the cross Mm -hmm. balls and all that (laughs) that kind of thing or. I do. I, um, I mean, I don't have a ton of equipment here, but I have a foam roller. Mm -hmm. Um, We have like a large assortment of (laughs) (laughs) self-massagers, which I mean, my gosh, if I'm on the foam roller for like 10 minutes, I'm like, sometimes I consider that to be a workout in and of itself (laughs) just because it's quite painful. Um, But lately it's just been a lot of mat work, like on my mat, Mm -hmm. doing a lot of decompression, like spinal decompression stuff because- I mean, so many of us are on our computers all day, like hunched over typing yeah. and trying to just like open up the chest space a lot and spend a lot of time um, decompressing my spine. That seems to be the nicest thing yeah. lately. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah, I think especially like being in, um, I mean, I think some of the states and things like that are starting to open up and mm-hmm. with the COVID situation, but yeah, a lot of people are obviously working from home or doing a lot more like Zoom communication Mm -hmm. and things like that. So I think a lot more people are sitting at their desk and I know Mm -hmm. that I myself like totally get what you're talking about. The shoulders kind of can round in because you're reaching Mm -hmm. for the keypad and just doing that whole and you know, not even letting your, I sometimes I do this like horrible chin forward. Oh my gosh. Same. You're like, yeah, well they call that (laughs) runner's chin too. Cause you're running and you're like, for some reason we think that if our chin's forward, we'll run faster. (laughs) So I'm like trying to just like constantly run like with my chin back. Yeah. Yeah. I believe it. Yeah. You put a little bit more weight out front, maybe it'll (laughs) fall forward a little bit faster. Um, so with that being said, I mean, um, our prior discussion before podcasting was, you know, Robin's involved in a lot of this mindfulness and meditation world. And, um, kind of the, the connection here is that Abby has, um, benefited from Robin's mindfulness work and stuff too. So could you tell us a little bit about that mindfulness, um, work that you do? And I think you had mentioned you've done some, um, was it seminars or talks on mindfulness and, and what, what that has been like for you and and what, what is mindfulness? (laughs) Yeah, that's a good place to begin. Um, Mindfulness is put very simply the practice of being aware of yourself, the present moment, your surroundings, other people. Mm -hmm. Um, And then sort of a sub definition that I like to give it is it's an imperfect practice. Um, Abby and I have talked a lot about that how this sort of perception of mindfulness is like this perfect um, lifestyle routine way of living. Um, Gosh. And then it's, I think a true mindfulness practice, it just doesn't have anything to do with the idea of perfection. Um, When you break it down to just being aware of what's going on, you can be in a very like imperfect situation. You can be upset. Um, maybe you have like a million emails in your inbox, (laughs) um, 
but really the act of being mindful is just noticing that and pausing for a moment and like sitting with that, sitting with the, the feeling of being upset or sitting with the feeling of stress, stress maybe because you have a hundred emails that you have to answer. And so, um, yeah, so I recently start or not recently, gosh, maybe back in November, I started an online mindfulness meditation teacher training um, because I wanted to take a deeper dive into the practice and the theory behind it um, and sort of use that on top of my yoga teacher training. Mm -hmm. I I lead, um, excuse me, it sounds like we all do like very physical, uh, like I ask a lot of my body physically. And so yoga, yoga is great. And I love that, but I am constantly needing to train my mind. Mm -hmm. So um, yeah, I dove into the the mindfulness teacher training um, through a program that's based in Salt Lake City called In Body Academy. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And um, it's it's sort of just, I've taken it pretty slowly because I want to give it the time that it deserves. And um, I probably will be finished with it in about a month. Um, but it's, it's very rooted in like Eastern practices. Mm -hmm. Um, and one of my like next goals after completing the teacher training is to, I would love to get more. I mean, I, so to give some context in undergrad, I majored in exercise science and neuroscience. Mm -hmm. So I love, I'm fascinated with pairing like the Eastern side of mindfulness meditation with like present day neuroscience and um, quote unquote Western medicine. Cool. um, And bridging that gap. So, so yeah, this is, I'm launching into a much longer answer to your original question, but um, I, yeah, I, I have offered, um, mindfulness meditation sessions, some like lots of Instagram live mindful meditation sessions, some pre-recorded sessions that I've posted to my Instagram TV. Um, and my approach is, well, I guess my, my goal is to be very approachable with it all because I think that it can kind of be, I mean, mindfulness itself is a bit of a buzzword today. Yeah. Um, which is cool. It means more people are becoming aware of it, but I want to make sure that it's very approachable for people and it's not this intimidating thing. Yeah. Um, so most of my sessions are kind of rooted in that and based in that and um, people of all stages of practice, whether they're total beginners, whether they've been doing this for a while um, have, have told me they've, they've benefited from it just because it's the whole practice of it is relatively simple if it's instructed properly. Um, and made simple. So that's awesome. Yeah. With like, you're saying you, excuse me, do a lot of stress to your body with your sports. And I think Mm -hmm. I find that that is a common theme, especially in the endurance, um, communities. I mean, they're doing a lot of stuff for long hours and Mm -hmm. they are continuing to activate that fight or flight or that sympathetic nervous system. And they're not really finding time to balance that out by activating the parasympathetic. And a lot of athletes will tell me, they're like, well, my stress relief is going for a run. And I'm like, well, maybe it (laughs) does relax your mind a little bit, but you still are activating that fight or flight, you know, hormones in your system. So, um, I think, you know, sitting down and doing, whether it's like breath work or mat work or whatever it is, I think mm-hmm. that's a really good pairing to kind of help balance out those hormones. And I think more endurance athletes need to get on board with that. Um, so with kind of the mindfulness stuff that you've been involved with and kind of bringing Abby into the loop here is um, Abby benefited, it sounds like, or is benefiting from some of the mindfulness work you've been helping her with. So Abby, do you want to let us know what, maybe why, why you needed some or wanted some mindfulness guidance and, or did you know what it was at the time and, and how did that uh, benefit for you? Yeah, I think that I honestly have just been learning more and more about mindfulness, even just since knowing Robin, but I do think that it is kind of like Robin said, like that buzzword, not everyone fully understands what it is. And I think that like a year or two ago, I probably would have thought like mindfulness is, oh, just like a healthy lifestyle and like 
eating a salad and doing some yoga or something, you know, but I think that, um, it, it has a lot to do too, with just like training your brain. And I think that that is such a powerful tool for just life in general, but also in like athletics and in sport. I know like in college, we actually worked with some different sports psychologists And one thing that a sports psychologist helped me a lot with was um, I was injured for a really long time and I was feeling anxiety about running again Mm. because I had been injured for like, I think it was like two or three months. And I think that combined with school, I was just like so nervous and I would actually get like butterflies before like track practice. And so I went to the sports psychologist and was like, just kind of shared what had happened. And then she helped me. kind of with it honestly was mindfulness looking back at it and like she helped me kind of like reframe my thinking and then also she was like okay when you're on a run I want you to think about like the like look at the birds like listen to things going on around you and she did this like five 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 rule where you did you would like while you're running look around and like notice five things that you see and then notice five things that you feel on your body and then five things that you hear. And you're supposed to go through that five times, which is so hard without letting your mind like go down a rabbit hole. Yeah. And that me so much during that time. So I think that's when I kind of first realized like how crazy your brain is. Um, <laughs> pretty, I wasn't thinking about being injured. I was like, wow, that ocean is beautiful. I've never seen that yeah. stick. Like things like that. <laughs> in the present (laughs) yeah totally that is very cool yeah during this time um just with all the stress of COVID and a lot of different things going on in life I felt like it was so helpful to have Robin like guide me through that and it kind of like made me realize how much it could benefit other people and other athletes when um I think sometimes they don't realize that or people will spend hours and hours training their bodies and, and doing everything they can for nutrition and, but they don't pay attention to their brain. So yeah, I think it's like how much it's helped me and can help other people too. So, yeah, Mm -hmm. that's very cool. I like that five, five, five thing. And I could imagine how that would be incredibly challenging to, (laughs) to (laughs) actually get through it five different times. I could, I mean, I could see that being really challenging. I like that though. That's a good one. And, um, Let's see. So kind of with that, you know, touching on the mindfulness stuff, Robin, do you see certain, because I know obviously you're in the athletic community and the endurance community as well. Do you see specific things like Abby mentioned the nerves prior to practice? Do you, what kind of things like, would you say are the most common that you see in the endurance population? Maybe that kind of needs maybe a little bit of more mindfulness assistance. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, gosh, the biggest thing is every single person is so different. Um, but what I do think is pretty consistent in the endurance specific population is, um, this, I think we see a lot of like type type a personalities that like perfectionist mindset. Mm -hmm. Um, and I have a little bit of that too. Mm -hmm. I think anyone who's like, crazy enough to run long distances or bike long distances or whatever it is, has a little bit of that in them. Um, and that I, I think it's important to remember that that is why, um, like we're potentially genetically wired to love our sports because of that. Mm -hmm. Um, and it's, but, but it's also on the opposite end of the spectrum. It's important to like let a little bit of that go beforehand and really remember why you're doing what you're doing. Um, I, I definitely, I'm a super competitive person. And so if I let myself, I can get very focused on the end goal. Yeah. Um, and the goal of winning or whatever it is, fastest time. But, um, like remembering that the process is why you're there, even Mm -hmm. if you don't realize it is super key um, for, for all of us, but especially those, I think in the endurance world, um, it takes so long to train for these things and it's so hard on your body, but, um, 
it's, it's, it's less hard on your body and it's better in the long run if you are aware of what's happening to your body and your mind during the process, whether that's training or um, during when you're in the middle of the race or something like that. So um, yeah, that's definitely something. And then there's also, I mean, gosh, I am by no means an expert in this arena, but female endurance athletes, there's a lot of pressure on Mm. us to perform a certain way, to look a certain way, to eat a certain way. Yeah. Um, that's like, you're probably your guys's area more than mine, but I think that there's definitely a connection and a bridge between a mindfulness practice Mm -hmm. and that and having a healthy body, um, image, body goals, all that stuff. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's, that's something that Abby has actually really helped me with, um, on the nutrition end is just, um, like almost, almost like she's, Abby, you've helped me build a mindfulness nutrition practice, (laughs) even if you didn't really realize it, but, (laughs) um, as my training changes coming into the summertime and then also transitioning into the winter, I need to be eating different foods in preparation for that and, um, becoming aware of why that is and what those cravings look like and Mm -hmm. what, where, like why they come and where they come from has Mm -hmm. really helped me. Um, yeah. So that is, yeah, I think mindfulness around food can be, I mean, I think there's not a lot of it, honestly. I mean, when I, when you think about it and people are rushing from one place to the next and eating in the car or, and that's kind of, um, that's a whole nother world, but it's definitely an area where mindfulness I think is definitely lacking for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, and people are, you know, not even realizing that they just ate on the way home from work and, mm-hmm. the, you know, and they, t- they're totally forgot about it. And like their body's not telling their brain that they are full or satiated, you know, mm-hmm. they're not acknowledging those sensations. Um, so yeah, that's definitely a whole another path in the world to dive into. Um, that, yeah, that is really interesting. And do you find like with the endurance population and your kind of suggestions or guidance for those types of individuals, do you find that you're providing more suggestions for kind of what Abby mentioned as like use of mindfulness during training, or is it more, um, suggestions for like sitting down on the mat after or before outside of training and working on mindfulness that way? Yeah, it's really, I mean, the end goal is have to have it be this fluid practice that mm-hmm. is ingrained, like deeply ingrained into all aspects of your life. Um, yeah. But it does have to start somewhere. And I think that starting point is different for people. For some people, I find that it's really um, easy and makes sense for them to create space at home outside of their activity or their sport. Mm-hmm. So sitting down on a yoga mat and dedicating five minutes every day. Yeah. Um, for other people, that's kind of scary and like intimidating. And so for them, my suggestion is usually to start practicing while they're on the move, while they're on the go, Mm -hmm. whether that's like during a ride, during a run, or even driving to their trailhead or whatever it is, Mm -hmm. um, driving to work, even like something that your body is moving, Mm -hmm. but you have time to slow your mind down. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Cause it's, it's hard to be still, to be yes. physically still. It's really hard. It's really challenging, especially if you're new to the practice. Um, mm-hmm. so I think most of us find when we sit down with ourselves, there are, it's like chaotic up here. <laughs> like yes. there's so much going on, so much chatter mm-hmm. nonstop and filtering through that is really difficult. Um, yeah. So it's easier, I think, for athletes to do that on the move because mm-hmm. it's a space that we're already comfortable being in. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. yeah. Do you find like, are you familiar with like a headspace app? Uh-huh. Yeah. So you mentioned kind of sitting there and being still is hard to do. So with your, I know with headspace, they obviously are like verbally guiding you through kind of things mm-hmm. to think about and, and how to kind of, they're giving you tools, you know, mm-hmm. to, um, think about. And so with your, like you mentioning sitting still, do you, are you sitting still in silence or, or do you have some sort of music or mm-hmm. guide, you know, verbally walking you through it or how do you do your mindfulness? Yeah. Um, mostly 
it's in silence. Mm -hmm. Um, but that's because I've been doing it for a while and, um, like have spent from a yoga teacher training. We were, it was a 30 day thing, uh, very intensive all day long. And we did 45 minutes every morning, Mm -hmm. um, of silence and, um, it, it does take practice, I think, to sit in silence. Um, so when my mind is feeling busier than normal, I will either actually put on some music. Mm. Um, and it's not always like the Zen music that I think people think about when they think of meditation. It's, um, like one of my favorite playlists sometimes. And Mm. then I'll find myself almost breathing in rhythm with Mm. the beat of the song, which is another practice in in and of itself. But I do, I have used headspace. Um, and I do like it. I, I turn to something like headspace when I'm so tired that I don't have the like ability to kind of plan out my meditation routine. Yeah. Um, and I think they're great. Like I've, I've listened to headspace and other apps, other meditations, guided meditations while I'm running. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Which is actually kind of nice. That's right. Yeah. So. I noticed that they headspace added like a running. And I think they actually, mm-hmm. speaking of the mindfulness around eating, I think they added a mindfulness around eating section as well for those people who mm-hmm. pay for the app. But um, yeah. with people who are new to mindfulness, what are your suggestions to like getting started? Um, yeah, I think that if you are someone that prefers to be led through, like your hand is held through the initial stages, then an app like Headspace is great. Um, yeah, so I, I definitely like my hat goes off to Headspace. I think it's an awesome platform. Um, but I would also just generally speaking, advise people to give themselves like maybe a month, a month where they are focused on becoming more aware or becoming more mindful, but not necessarily like outline a schedule for themselves. Um, I think I, I mean, I am a firm believer in planners. I like color code everything, but I think that when it comes to a consistent mindfulness meditation practice, you have to have a lot of forgiveness, a Mm. lot of forgiveness Mm -hmm. um, in order for it to become a consistent thing. So if you pencil in like five minutes every day of something and you want to label it mindfulness, but you have a list of like what form that can take, it could be either on your mat for five minutes, it can be sitting down at your desk um, in the middle of the day and taking five breaths. It can be driving to work and noticing something, how the steering wheel feels in your hands. It can be brushing your teeth. Like I have a quip um, toothbrush and it's like, so there's the timer, right? So right. I know that it's whatever it is. I don't, I can't remember. I think it's three minutes, but three minutes of like just focus on the way the toothbrush feels in my mouth. So things like that, where you're drawn to the moment, um, Mm -hmm. can be really useful five minutes every day or five minutes, three times a week, whatever's, um, doable. So a lot of forgiveness for yourself, for your schedule, for life, life Mm -hmm. happens. Um, and then know that if you, if you mess up, you miss a day, then like you're sort of doing it you're doing it right because you have already noticed that you've missed a day and, and all that stuff. So it's, I mean, it's really just about getting back to being as aware as possible for anything that's happening and not labeling it as positive or negative. Yeah. Um, that's cool. Yeah. I think, do you suggest like people start slow? Like you said, like five minutes versus jumping into like a full 45 minutes of silence. <laughs> for sure. I yeah. mean, definitely five, five minutes every day is, Um, I mean, if you think about, it's always interesting to look at your phone and look at how much time you spend on Instagram in a week. (laughs) And then if you break that down and like pull five minutes out of that, I mean, it's so doable. It's so doable. So the hardest part is telling yourself, okay, start. But as soon as you start, just set the timer on your phone. And um, yeah, it's so I mean, that being said, if you want to dive in and do a 45 minute session, it can be definitely enlightening. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So yeah, I would say start short. 
is yeah. my recommendation. And um, Abby, how did you, you mentioned obviously the college experience, but kind of more recently, what were the things you did to involve more mindfulness? Was it sitting in silence? Is it yoga? Is it breath work and training? How did you incorporate that? Yeah. So, I mean, we mentioned this earlier, but doing Robin's um, mindfulness classes just like on the phone was like a really nice and easy way to do it. And it was super nice just to have her kind of talk through it. I kind of like having the guidance through because mm -hmm. um, I do think it is hard to stay focused on one thing when you don't have that. So I really enjoyed those classes. And then I think like when you start doing it a little bit here and there, you start thinking about it more kind of like Robin said and and then I think it's cool because then even on like bike rides or runs or just throughout life you realize more what you're listening to in your head versus what you're telling yourself and I think yeah. that that is huge and probably one of the most eye-opening things but yeah to answer your question Robin's classes I feel like really kind of got me in the groove of doing that so that was really cool Awesome. And you mentioned those were on the phone. Are you talking about like phone calls or these video classes? They were, Robin, what was the app thing that you used? Yeah, the, it was called, it's called Whereby. I don't know if you've heard of it, Kyla, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. it's a video conferencing platform that okay. I was just, I, I use Zoom a lot. I use Microsoft Teams a lot and I yeah. wanted a space that visually was different when people mm. logged on. So you're able mm -hmm. to customize it with like your logo and cool. um, just some branding elements. Yeah. That's kind of like nice and peaceful to look at if you're staring at a screen. Yeah. Okay. So, so they will log on and are they looking at your face or are their eyes shut? Kind of give me an idea of what, how long is this? Like, what is this <laughs> like? Yeah. Yes. I mean, oh no, you go ahead, Abby. I want to hear well, your perspective. <laughs> um, it's like Zoom. But it's, um, so basically like we would all log on and then I turn my video off just so I don't have to like looking at myself. Um, and then Robin would just like guide it through. So it's more like I would just prop my phone up somewhere and listen to Robin as she guided everyone through. Um, and they were usually, so kind of just the mindfulness ones were like, what, like 10 or 15 minutes. And then she did some yoga class ones that were 30 or 40 minutes where it's like 30 minutes of yoga and then like a 10 minute meditation. Very cool. Love that. Yeah. And you said yeah, that the, some of those are up on your IGTV. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. That's what I'm doing after IGTV. this recording. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. That is so cool. And um, so I know in our prior conversation, Robin, you were talking about how you're trying to create a space for the endurance community or, or was it specific to you said mountain bikers and runners or mm -hmm. kind of that world and creating a space for them to kind of log on with you and become more mindful eventually down the road that's one of your goals right or yeah yeah um I'm kind of I'm in the uh, beginning to mid stages of of launching that but essentially yeah. um yeah it's going to be a series of guided um, videos or recordings that are tailored to mountain bikers and runners, um, mainly because those are like my main activities right now. And um, um, yeah, so it will be a series of both yoga and some mobility exercises that's kind of rooted in yoga and then some mindfulness meditation practices as well. And I think that um, my boyfriend, Ren, is going to be involved in that just cool. to kind of try to expand um, the reach a little bit. Yeah. I think there are a lot of people in the mountain biking and running spaces that don't really know that this would benefit their definitely athletics. And um, Ren, um, <laughs> it'd be funny to have him on this call because I think that he's he's benefited a lot from it as well. Okay. Um, he's definitely super interested in all of the mindfulness and yoga and mobility stuff, but um, um, he, he has his own kind of journey with it, but mm -hmm. it's, it's benefited him from injuries and coming back from injuries and um, 
just kind of finding peace in in pursuing these endurance crazy yeah <laughs> experiences awesome. so yeah there's a lot of people out there I think that are aware of it and that are that are not aware of it in the mountain yeah. biking and running space yeah I like I said I think that's something that we need more of <laughs> I yeah I talk to yeah. my athletes and I know that they need more of stuff like this uh -huh. I, I'm like what what do you do to relax <laughs> and they're like <laughs> like go for a run or yeah right like <laughs> yell at my kids was one of the responses I got. It's like, or how do you handle stress? That's like one of the one of the things. And so, um, you know, I think we need more activation of that parasympathetic, mm -hmm. like I said. And I think this is a really great way to do that. Um, mm -hmm. And so, I I wanted to. I know we're getting close on time here, but I so wanted to dive into your whole like active background because I think that's probably such a cool topic too. Because you mentioned the ultra running stuff and. And then you do all kinds of backcountry stuff. And just, I'd love to, maybe we'll have to do a part two podcast or something like that. And <laughs> yours and Abby's adventures in the mountains. Um, because I'm sure people would. Fun ones. <laughs> yes. I'm sure people would love to, to hear about that. And, and even just like the nutrition support and stuff, how you guys yeah. uh, fuel stuff like that, I think would be super cool. Um, but since we're going to kind of tie up here, I don't want to keep you guys too long. Um, do you want to let people know where they can find you? And then maybe we can, once your, um, mindfulness stuff goes live, we can put it back in the, the show notes here whenever that goes live as well. But, um, if you want to let people know where they can find you, go ahead and let them know. Yeah. Um, well, let's see. You can find me. So I have a website. Um, it's mindfullyrobin.com. Mm -hmm. um, and that's kind of a mix of things. It's I have a little bit of a blog going. So what I'm up to, some mindfulness things that I find, um, project updates. So projects I'm working on with other brands and how that ties into mindfulness. Um, lots of imagery and photography and then some mindfulness yoga practices. And then on social media, it's just at mindfullyrobin for Instagram. Awesome. Um, yeah. So, awesome. and then Abby, uh, we chatted with Abby last podcast, but Abby does some, um, great recipe work and things like that too. And, um, you, you can find Abby at, I believe it was wildly dash well.net, right, Abby? Yep. Yeah. Awesome. That's and, and then what's your Instagram handle, Abby? Um, I actually just change it to wildly well, Abby. Awesome. Yeah. Do you, if anything, check out their photos. These girls are amazing uh. photographers. <laughs> like you can get sucked into all these nature pictures that just like make you want to go on a camping trip or something. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you ladies so much for your time today. And thank maybe, you. maybe like I said, we can do a, a, a second round two or something to get all that other info from you. Yeah, that sounds good. Thanks so much, Kyla. It was good no to problem. chat with you guys. Yes, you too. Take care, you guys. Okay. Bye, you Bye. too. Bye.